Good afternoon, folks, and welcome back to another episode of Redeeming the Time. I'm your host, Chris Macy, and I'm joined here in studio with Mick Schlachter. Hey, Mick, how you doing? Doing good, Chris. Good to be here. Uh, uh, Mick, uh, this is his first time on the radio program. He is uh, one of the elders here at the North Valley Church of Christ. And North Valley uh, sponsors this uh, program, keeps it on the air. We appreciate that. And if you, you want to know more about the uh, congregation here at North Valley, we encourage you to go to the website, www.nvcoc.net. And, and there you'll, you can see a little bit about Mick, our, one of our elders, as well as our other elders, uh, Rick and Alex. Alex has been on the program a couple of times. But Mick is uh, joining us uh, today. We have a, a topic that has been kind of really the forefront in the news and, and uh, all over the country, not just within politics, but even within religious circles. And that is the topic of illegal immigration. And so we're going to hit on that today. We're going to look at it from the perspective of a citizen of the United States. But mainly what we really want to focus on, we'll probably hit on this uh, in the, around the middle of the program, is uh, what does the Bible say about this? And what should our Christian perspective be? And I want to hand this over to Mick and to kind of give us a, the base of what's going on with illegal immigration and uh, give us that understanding of, of where the, what the facts really are. Mick. Thank you, Chris. Uh, immigration is uh, a hot issue. A lot of emotion involved in that. And uh, to balance that in a way that we're being kind as well as protecting our country, uh, it's a difficult issue. And uh, some of the topics that it touches on, of course, is our educational system, our medical service providers, driving privileges, crime, employment. That's both the workers as well as the employers and the rules there. Taxes, enforcement or lack of enforcement, as the case may be. And all of these things involve costs. There's a lot of practical issues involved, but there's also the family issues. We have families getting broken up. We have people that are hurting and need help. Uh, that's what makes this such a difficult issue and such an emotional issue. And that's part of the reason that the resolution has been so difficult. Hmm. Well, when I was researching this and looking online, I, I was mainly looking for uh, other biblical groups, or maybe I should say religious groups, and their perspective on this. And uh, uh, I saw a, lo a lot of uh, uh, blog postings from different uh, folks, and they, they would typically wanted to say that they need the, the illegal immigrants needed to stay. Uh, we were not, we shouldn't send them back. Uh, and then, of course, you got that uh, in the Bible where it talks about where Paul tells us in Romans 13 that we need to submit to authority to our governments. That would be the laws of the land. Of course, you, you were bringing up that one of the issues is uh, well, that the laws aren't being enforced, that people are coming over and we're, we're not being sent back. So what are we to do as Christians? How are we to react to this when uh, we, we see you know, illegal immigrants, uh, they're being maybe employed, uh, maybe by us. What, what if uh, we are looking for some workers for our fields or somebody to, to do the landscaping in our yard and we know this person's here illegally, what is the Christian to do about that? It becomes a difficult uh, decision in those things, but you know, we are told uh, not to lie. And uh, that's true for uh, individual as well as for business. If we conduct ourselves in an honest manner, uh, we can be kind, we, we can provide food to people that need food, and uh, medical help to people that need medical help. And, and those things don't in, entail lying. Uh, once we start to do things that are illegal, it's not only a problem from our Christian law, it's a problem for our country. Um, many people think there needs to be new legislation, new rules, and there probably can be some improvements. But we're not implementing or enforcing the rules that exist. 
And uh, one of the things I've thought about is why are they not being enforced? Is it the fact that it's not politically correct? Maybe uh, our leaders disagree with the law and they want to be kind. Maybe they want the political power that comes from uh, not enforcing the law that gets you votes. Uh, maybe it's lack of respect for the law. But, you know, our leaders take, whether it's attorney general or president or many other positions, they take an oath. And part of that oath is to uphold the law. And if we did uphold the laws, we would find a lot of these issues would be improved. Not entirely eliminated, but they would be improved. We've got to uh, elect people who have respect for the law and who will enforce the law. Now they can speak out when laws need to be changed. And there's no doubt. When we look at the, all the different groups of uh, illegals, and I don't care whether they're from Mexico or uh, Canada or Argentina, uh, we need to, to treat all uh, immigrants uniformly. We've got long-term adults that are here. We've got the dreamers. We've got the short-term adults that haven't been here long. And of course, then we, we've got all the kids that are flooding across the border. Each one of those groups needs uh, kind treatment, different treatment, uh, and that can be uh, developed and implemented. But all the best laws will get us nowhere if we don't have people who will enforce the laws. And that's the primary problem right now no one has the will to uh, enforce the laws. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, and I agree, because when when you have a government who's not enforcing those laws, and so then you have all of these folks who are coming in here illegally, it, it puts uh, us, the citizens of the country, in, in a difficult spot. I mean, we are a kind people here. We want to help folks, and so when we see broken up families, when we see these children, we. We just don't have the heart to tell them, no, you've got to go back. We don't want to do that. So our lawmakers are putting us in this difficult situation of, of an ethical question of what do we do now? Uh, we have, what, almost 12 million, if not more, uh, mm -hmm. illegal immigrants who are already here. Now, I want to read uh, Romans 13, verses 1 through 5. This is where Paul is talking about uh, uh, being subject to the government. But I just want our folks... Uh, to hear this, and then I want us to talk a little bit about it. Every person is to be sub, uh, in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. For it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger, who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Now, obviously, we, we have to keep this within the context of the whole uh, word of God. Uh, when Jesus says about to the Pharisees, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto God what is God, talking about paying taxes. Uh, he was talking about subject yourselves unto the rules of authority. But if, when that rule or authority uh, circumvents God's will, you know, you do God's will first. You give unto God what is his. And God wants us as Christians to be a shining light, be salt on the earth. When we see these folks come across, we want to do what we can to help them out. But is it the right thing to do on our part, even though our government's not enforcing the law, is it the right thing for us to help them stay here? Or should we tell them they should go home? That's 
That's the big question, and I think the Bible does answer that. I'm not going to go there yet. Uh, I thought I would uh, maybe bounce this around a little bit, looking at Romans, looking at Matthew 21 or 22 and 21, other passages like that. So we have these 12 million illegals. You know, what can we, what can we do? Well, those are good points, Chris. We uh, definitely we want to be kind. Uh, we want to be helpful to people, uh, food, medical help. But we don't want to lie. We don't want to break the law. If we give a job to someone in our business and they do not have documentation, that's deceiving. That's sin. We should not be doing that. We should be giving jobs to people who are here, here in a legal manner. Um, that doesn't mean we're, we're unkind, especially when you think about all these kids coming across. They definitely have special needs, and we should not be just busing them back across the border and dropping them off. That would be not correct. But we need a real solution, a comprehensive solution, one that addresses all the different needs. And I think the, the majority of the population of this country will support a kind, comprehensive solution but the leaders will not bring it up, have it voted on, and then implement it. And they're afraid to do that for several different reasons. We as individuals, you know, therefore to him who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin, James 4.17. Pretty clear what we need to do. We need to be kind to people. Uh, we're not going to go down and, and uh, take on vigilante actions and things like that. By the same token, we are not going to facilitate people breaking the law. And, and that, uh, that's any law. That's not just immigration. That uh, really uh, pertains to any law. And again, if we don't like the law, let's write our congressman. Let's vote for people who are going to be conscientious about implementing and enforcing the law. Hmm. Uh, good point. Again, uh, as I was uh, perusing through, looking at all these different blog posts of other people uh, commenting on this, uh, I was mainly looking at um, uh, blog postings from people who uh, read and study the Bible, believe in the Bible, and uh, all of them would uh, all wanted to say that Hey, we've got to take these people in, you know, because they, they have that kind heart. And I agree with what you're saying. I think I think they're wrong in doing this. I think, yes, we need to help them out, do what we can to help them. But they need to do the right thing. They need to uh, uh, either, A, go back and, or, or, you know, go through the right channels to be here legally. And uh, I, I've made comments about this to some of these others. I've posted on their blog posts uh, uh, making these comments. And they always would try to refute it. And so I would ask them what Paul would do in this situation. They would say, oh, well, Paul would bring these people right in. I said, well, what about Onesimus, the slave uh, from Philemon? What did he do with him? And in Philemon, chapter, uh, well, in verses 10 through 20, uh, Paul is writing Philemon and talking about this. Uh, Paul, for our listeners, he's in prison right now. And uh, Philemon is in uh, Colossae, I think. And um, anyway, his slave ran away, slave Onesimus. And he found, finds Paul in Rome. Uh, Paul teaches him the gospel truth. He converts him, baptizes him into Christ. And guess what he does with him? Sends him back. This isn't an illegal immigrant. This guy's a slave. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to talk about ethics, is that right for this guy to be a slave? It didn't matter. Paul said, you, you need to uh, uphold this, uh, whatever reason you were a slave. You, you need to go back. It is illegal in the laws of that time for him to have run away. And he had to hold to that law. That's the, now, it's hard for us to accept, especially in today's culture. But let's take that and look at the illegal immigration issue. All right, we've got these people coming across the border. They have, they have children. Yes, they're broken homes. Are they poor? Yes. Uh, but coming here isn't going to fix their situation is going to make the situation here a lot harder for us and they're breaking the law 
Now, us as Christians, what are we to do? That's the big, big question. I think it's clear. And when we read uh, Philemon, read Colossae, well, we do what we can to help them. We want to give them the medical attention if they need it, or, or uh, whatever it, the need their needs may be, food and clothing. But they need to make that right decision and go home and then do the right thing on coming back. Now, is that going to be possible with 12 million people? Let me throw that question at you. We went 12 million. How? You know, that, that's that? really difficult. Uh, obviously, there is not going to be a plan to round up 12 million people and send them home. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. That's not <laughs> going to happen. It's just like uh, saying a, a fence on the southern border or the northern border is going to fix all our problems. Hmm. It's a component, it's maybe a good thing to, to build, but it, it's not the complete solution. When we look at all the different groups that are here, again, I mentioned before, the long terms, the dreamers, the short terms, the kids on the southern border recently, we can come up with good, compassionate, common sense solutions. And I'm not sure for the 12 million, if that's a path to participation as compared to a path to citizenship there or something in between there are a lot of variations but something that brings them into the legal system they're taxable they're not lying anymore yeah. our businesses are not lying anymore everyone's functioning on an ethical truthful basis that's the right solution. And, and I, I, I am in agreement. Uh, however, let's be honest and be, call it what it is. It is amnesty. Whether they, it's just a pathway to participation, ultimately they will be given citizenship. And every politician out there will jump on that. They see them as votes. Well, Christ gave me amnesty. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's not necessarily a bad word. No, it's not. I know, I know people use that, but I just want to be clear with them. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, I mean, you got, like you said, 12 million. There's no way we're going to get them all back across the border. And honestly, it's not, it's not the right thing to do. <laughs> we, we, even though we, we may not have wanted this, we didn't enforce our laws, but we let them come in. We've let them stay. Uh, our businesses let them stay. So now we have an obligation, I think, to, well, let, we, let's fix this. Yeah, we, in the 80s, we did the same thing. Didn't we? Didn't we do this under uh, Reagan? Some, uh, an yes, but fight program? No, no enforcement uh, after the enaction of the law. Exactly. Therefore, it happened again. So that's not the only thing we need to do. We, how do we keep this from happening again without being this isolationist country, not letting anyone in at all? You know, what do we do? I mean, it, I guess my question is, we, as a Christian, I, I want to be. Uh, open and caring. I know things are hard for a lot of folks down there in Central America. What is the right way for us to help them? You know, it's going to be difficult to get uh, enforcement. There, there can be several uh, versions of the law that would be fair and uh, uh, treat the people kindly, but if there's no I implementation, if there's no enforcement, it will fail again. Uh, discipline is a, a difficult thing. Uh, probably the new legislation, when the comprehensive plan is developed, it's going to have to give enforcement to folks that we really believe will implement the enforcement. And I lean more towards putting some of that to the sta states. The states have, uh, uh, I think, are in a better position to implement that. Um, it's a difficult problem if there's no enforcement. The best ideas in the world just will not work. Why haven't, <laughs> why haven't the legislators uh, solved this previously? It just is, uh, it, it's scary. I think they're afraid to... Uh, go forward with it, it's going to affect the next election. Uh, it, it's just a difficult issue. But finding the solutions and finding a solution that would be uh, 
approved by the majority of the citizens of the country is just the first step and not the most difficult step. What we can do is uh, we can encourage our representatives to do what we think is the right thing and do the right thing. And uh, sin is not just a, a sin for a person. It can be a sin for a corporation. Sin in, in uh, the execution of your government uh, responsibilities. This is a sin problem, like so many other problems uh, that uh, are part of life. Hmm. Yeah, and, and, and you're, you're right. I mean, the, the fact that the legislators have not done anything, it's not, it's not fair to us as American citizens. It's not fair to all those who've come into this country legally and in the, in the right way. And it's not fair to those who do come in here illegally. It, it does hurt them. I mean, uh, they, they, don't, they don't know or understand the processes uh, of the country. They think that they can uh, disregard certain parts of the law and they'll be just fine. Many of them can't speak English and it's a great hindrance to them. And they're not going to get that American dream that they probably came here to look for. In fact, they're going to be used and abused as many of them are. They're not getting paid as much because hey, they're here illegally. And so now people have a uh, a way to control them and, and the businesses uh, circumvent tax payments yep. there's a so lot of bad things there's a lot of bad incentives for people to be abused and for uh, uh, companies to uh, abuse the uh, tax system exactly and like it's like you said all those things uh, affect uh, Romans chapter 13 verses one through five and uh, those coming here illegally and those of us who do nothing about it Philemon 1 verses 10 through 20. I see you got uh, Matthew 25 up there. I've, I've got that written down also. The judgment 25 verses 34 to 36. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to head one to go ahead and read that. Yeah, for, for I us. thought that was a, a good uh, scripture. Uh, Matthew 25 31 through 40. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. That's a pretty uh, powerful scripture in that uh, we have a, a vision here of uh, the judgment. And uh, the thoughts that are being shared are not uh, deep theological disagreements. They're specifically how did we treat our fellow man? Uh, whether it's immigrants or anyone else, how did we reach out and treat our fellow man? That's what was important. And we need to keep uh, that kind of scripture in mind as we uh, evaluate any issue in life, but especially this immigration issue. Oh, absolutely. We cannot allow ourselves to become so dogmatic against these things that we think that these people are evil. They're not. They want the same things we want. Uh, they want the best things for their family. Uh, they, they want a better life. I want that for them too. And I want it for them so badly, I don't want them to turn to illegal activities in order to obtain it. I want them to do it the right way. 
I want them to uh, have a good ethics, a good morals, and a good character. And I want them to find, I know they can find that in Christ. And if they're here, if I see them, I want to do what I can to help them, but not as far as breaking the law. I want them here in a legal status. That's right. A status that will bless them and bless their kids. It will give them full access and uh, they'll be in obedience to the laws as well as uh, the rest of the population of the country will be in obedience to the laws of the land. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're running a little short on time. I just want to say a few more things to our audience. Um, you know, when you're out there and if you're getting on the Internet and you're, you're looking up things about you know, what should the church do, there's, there's a lot of commentary out there from folks. And, and a lot of them, are, I think, are misusing some passages, uh, such as Galatians 3.28, Ephesians 2.14 and 22. I saw those out there a lot. Those are not talking about how we, we would deal with this situation. That's talking about how Christ brought the Gentiles and Jews together and how we should treat one another in Christ. But what you need to focus on is Romans 13. You need to focus on what Paul said to Philemon about Onesimus and keep all that within the context of what Jesus said here in Matthew 25, 34 to 36. Don't lose that love you have for your fellow man when you're trying to help them uh, do the right thing. This is a difficult topic. It's a, a ethical questions. And uh, um, I appreciate you all being here to, to join us with that. If you have any questions, we encourage you to go to our website www.mvcoc.net click on that radio mic send us your questions or comments on this we greatly appreciate it thank you mick for being here with us uh, this day thank you chris and uh, thank you lord our savior jesus christ for giving us this opportunity to study his word